All right, DBS community, welcome back to another Dragon Ball Super video here with Kyle Chris. And today we have the black reveals for the week. Um, I did see on here that uh, they said that they are going to be showing off tournament cards um, as well as uh, uh, the black cards of set. So it doesn't, it doesn't look like we're, we're getting any multicolor in this particular set, which is okay. Um, it's the end of the block of the Unison Warrior set for all of the monocolor. And I think going into next set, I think we'll get some sort of multicolor uh, stuff going into, um, I think it's called Cross Spirits, um, which will be set 14 technically. So make sure you guys like and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think of these cards down below, like, and, uh, you know, hit the bell for all the notifications. We post videos weekly. So we'll start here with Supreme Kai of Time. Um, auto burst three when this card attacks, draw one. If your life is at four or less, or you have eight or more cards in your warp, you may draw two. And then uh, take cards in your life. To your hand until you have six cards left. Then we get Bay, Supreme Kai of Bay, the Chrono Keeper. Auto once per turn. When you play a battle card using Overrealm, draw a card. Place three black cards from your warp in your drop area. Up three black battle cards. Uh, activate main for one black. Choose one card in your hand, discard it. If you don't have a unison in play, play one uh, one black unison with a power of 9k from your drop or your warp with a marker on it. And then you have an activate main, you can place one life from your. Uh, one card from your life in your drop area. Place up the two black battle cards from your warp into your drop, and then battle cards you play using Overrealm aren't sent, are not, aren't sent, it should just be are not, are not sent to the warp at the end of your turn. So, the idea of this is that you can give Overrealm cards uh, the ability to have Dark Overrealm. Um, I think that's what it's called. It's Black Overrealm? Dark Overrealm. Dark, yeah, Dark Overrealm. So Dark Overrealm was a skill. When you play Dark Overrealm, uh, the card sticks on board. And Dark Overrealm is a very, very powerful way for Black to cheat out extremely powerful cards. And then they don't leave the board. So with this, you actually get to do this, but you get to uh, do this for non-Dark Overrealm. And we were experimenting a little bit in our uh, group chat with some um, very interesting Black cards that have, that have Overrealm. And if you have the ability to keep them on board, kind of can kind of mess up the game. Uh, can mess up the game state very, very poorly. So, uh, hopefully some of these cards don't get banned. Because there are a few black cards that have extremely extremely powerful abilities, and if they stick on board, it could be very, very detrimental to the game. <laughs> so, uh, next is going to be Maki Cabra. So, this is the... Um... Oh, this guy's going to be very disappointed because this is not a wish leader. <laughs> you can only add up to... Uh, you can only include up to seven Dark Dragon Ball cards in your deck. When this card attacks, add up the two Dark Dragon Balls from your de from your deck or your life to your hand and shuffle. And then when you have uh, then you have a Wish ability, whenever you um, uh, have seven um, seven Dark Dragon Ball cards in your drop area, you may switch up to one, uh, draw one, switch up to one energy act mode, warp one of your battle your opponent's battle card from the drop area, and then flip. And then we have Dark King Maki Copper restored to the throne. Uh, auto once per turn, draw. Activate main. Once per turn, if all of your energy is black, you choose one card in your hand and bottom deck it. You can choose one of your opponent's cards. Um, you can choose one of your opponent's battle cards, but it actually costs four less and negated skills for the game. Switch that card to activate and gain control of it. So the idea of this is that you can just um, basically control all of your opponent's cards, and even though they won't have skills, because if they had skills, they would be broken, because you can just... But it, the idea is that you can just take cards. Um, you just take value off their board. Um... And then you just have these bodies that you can just use to swing with. Uh, remove seven Dragon Balls uh, in your drop area from the game. If you do this, this card gets triple attack for the turn. Now, what's nuts is that uh, this card will draw every time it attacks. So you will technically draw uh, three three cards that turn. Um, and I'm sure there's a way you can give your leader a uh, triple strike. Wink, wink. <laughs> There's a card that you can play to give your leader a triple strike and 15k to then make your leader a 30k triple strike triple attack that draws three cards. It's pretty nuts. It's pretty nuts. So, um, leader's cool. Uh, it would be cool if it was a wish leader. Uh, if you had the ability to use desire cards, um, I feel like they kind of missed the ball on that one. They should have allowed him to be able to use wish cards or, or uh, any of the desire cards. It would have... Uh, it would have been very powerful. And this, this, uh, I, I don't think it would have been broken, but it would have at least given us a reason to play all of those desire cards that they kind of shoved down people's throats for a little bit with the, uh, the Shinron Dragon. So, 
would have been a very cool idea. Unfortunately, they didn't do that, but we'll move on. Uh, so we have the Demigra uh, Momentary Ally. This is the Udison that you use um, with um, uh, Kai. Uh, so it's uh, auto once per turn, burst one if your leader is a Black Saiyan only or God only. I really feel like they should have put just Black Leader because this allows you, because God and Saiyans, there's only... I mean, you, you 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 don't allow them to work with just any of the demon gods, which is really dumb considering Demigra is a demon god. It's just, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, when you play a battle card using Overrealm, this card gains warm, Wormhole for the turn. Uh, we went over this in a video before. For newer players who do not know what the keyword skill Wormhole means, Wormhole is a term that has been used on the, it's been only Demigra cards, just kind of obviously counts with that. Uh, with a demi girl card and the demi and it's basically allows you to use over realm or dark over realm twice in a turn which is very good the uh the old demi girl leader has wormhole as a keyword and um just just allows you to uh um really punish people um so it's just kind of weird that it's just black saiyan only so that there are some leaders like vigex of course that it can't work with uh because vigex is a human is a earthling and a saiyan um so it works with the super saiyan 4 goku it works with um the bardock um works with obviously kai as well so i'm sure kai's i mean kai's obviously when you're gonna be playing with it currently uh, activate main for one place up the two black battle cards from your warp to your drop that's good that's good that's a good effect um activate main uh minus three add up to two black battle cards and it costs seven or less and the overwhelm skill from your warp to your hand mm. So, uh, any of your Overrealm cards that you do, um, you can get them back with this effect. So, that, that, that is very cool. And when you want your Overrealm once, you can burst one, and then you can Overrealm again. Um, because of this, your leader has the ability to take a life, or crit a life, move two cards over, and then you can play out two Overrealm cards and keep them on board. So, that is very, very powerful. Also, now we have a new card. Uh, SS3 Bardock, break, breaking free from the mask. This is a very cool art. I really want to see this card in um, SPR form. Very, very cool card. 30k double strike. Once per turn, add it to one card from your life to your hand. When your opponent activates a counterattack skill on an extra card, negate that skill. This, card, this skill can be can be it. This skill can be activated at counter timing. Interesting. Hmm. Strange. Okay. Uh, I can main for four black. If you have 15 or more black cards in your warp, plays a card from your hand. Okay, so it's a four drop. Um, I can main once per turn if your life is at one. If, if your life is at one, switch this card to active mode. Oh, okay. Um, essentially, this is going to be Super Saiyan 4 Goku support. Um, nothing else you're really going to play this in, but... Uh, yeah, so... The interesting thing, this card's very cool. Four energy is a lot, and when you when you have black decks like Vigex, um, who don't really play a lot of Overrealm for energy, you're not. This card's not gonna be valuable in that. Um, other black decks, the one black deck that would work very well in would be Super Saiyan Four Goku. Um, uh, Super Saiyan, not Super Saiyan, but uh, well, yeah, and Super Saiyan uh, Zeno Gogeta probably as well. Um, Supreme Kai, maybe, uh, but there's so many better options for it. Um, Black is getting a lot of very good support. Um, the the one drops, these guys here, um, are actually gonna make a huge difference. I feel in the meta, um, if they haven't already. So having a card that you can play like this, and if your opponent decides to Frieza or God Sealing, and you have multiple of those Gokus on board, you're just ripping cards from your opponent's hand. Um, so it's almost ends up being a fair trade if you lose one card and four energy, and they lose up to two to three warp cards from, to the warp. It could be very effective. Spring Power of Time, Time Labyrinth Unleashed. Counterattack, you get the attack, play this card. If you or your opponent has three more cards in the warp, reduce the energy cost of this card in your hand by two. Okay, so it's a, so it's a one drop. 
Well, there's black when this when uh, when, uh, when this card is played using its counter skill. Choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and send it to its owner of warp. At the end of your turn, play any card sent to the warp by the skill to your owner's battle area with their skills negated. Okay. This, this is interesting. So, this allows you to negate and then warp a card from your opponent's board. And then when you warp a card from your opponent's board, it, you basically can remove attackers. And that's very effective. Um, it's very, very effective. Um, you play it, you negate, and then you warp a card. And then at the end of the turn, they get it. Uh, it comes back, but it doesn't have any skills. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh, this is for Fujita. Thwarting the Dark Empire. This is a critical 30k aura realm for 6. 1 energy. Uh, when this card attacks, choose any number of your opponent's cards that add up to 4 energy. And 4 cross the list and send them to the owner's warp. Huh. Huh. Interesting. A 30k crit. So the 30k, so we have more Dark Broly support. Great. Just just, just, just hope we need more Dark, more, more dark Broly support. Um, so he has the, the, the black, the, the, um, the, uh, secret ID effect, uh, which is cool. Um, that's very, that, that's very interesting. Um, but he, he has this, he has like a mini secret ID effect, but only when he attacks. So this is definitely a card you want to keep on board. After uh, so, if you play this in um, in Spring Kai, uh, you can attack with this every turn to then make them warp card. That's that is pretty interesting. Yeah, that that is a pretty interesting card. I like that. Goku. Okay, so th this is the uh, the Goku we saw already. It's uh, same thing over Realm Six for one. This card attacks, draw one, and then at the end of the turn, switch this card to active mode. So this is a card you're gonna wanna play in Supreme Kai, uh, being able to play this card out. When the card attacks, draw a card. So you play so you play it, you attack, draw a card, at the end of your turn restand it. So at the end of at the end of at the end of every turn when you whenever this card attacks, you draw a card. And restand it. That's really good. Very, very cool. Very very cool. So in Goten Thwarting the Dark Empire, uh, Overrealm 2, critical for leaders of Spring Kai, when this card is played using Overrealm, then uh, you banish two cards and you draw one. So banishing is the effect of, it's not technically bursting, uh, because it's not going to the drop, banishing it's going to the warp. So you send up to two, up to two cards from top of your deck to your, oh, so it's up to, oh, so you actually don't have to, so you can just play this for two, for free. And draw a card, and it's a 10k crit. That's that, that's a really good card. Is there gonna be a Trunks? <laughs> of course, Trunks double strike for leaders. Okay, we, we've we've seen this before, where they basically just take a, a tag team, whether it's Goku, Vegeta, Trunks, and Gohan, Trunks and Goten, and they'll make one double strike, one crit. This is pretty cool. So this is uh, they're they're free double strike and crit cards that uh, can banish cards from, from the top of your deck, which you would do that because you would want cards in your warp so you can awaken and they draw you a card. So these are actually really good. Super Saiyan 3 Goten, uh, Gotenks, Surging Strike, uh, Unique Dual Attack, Overrealm uh, 6 for 2 black, or Xeno Evolve for 1 on top of a Gotenks energy cost of 3. Once card is removed from your battle area by an opponent's skill, play up to 1 Goten, Xeno, and Trunks Xeno with energy cost 3 or less and the Overrealm skill from your drop or your warp. Okay. Whew, okay, so these these abilities say when you play them using Overrealm. I thought it said to, when they're played, do that. Ooh, okay, so you uh, when this card is removed, you get to play these guys out. That's cool. Uh, actually, battle this card gets 10k power and double strike for the battle. Huh. So you have a you have you have a potential base 35k double strike dual attack. Um, that's cool. That's a cool card. I don't know how good it's gonna be. I'm not sure, um, but the, I mean, the idea of the card is good. It's got a lot of text. It's good. Clash of the Mask of Warriors. That's a really cool looking art. That's really cool looking art. Um, 
Entry battle. Choose one of your opponent's units and cards. Uh, your, your opponent may remove a marker from that card. If they don't, your leader doesn't take damage from attacks by their units and cards, which strike skills for the battle. Huh. Okay. So this card, we're, they were talking about this in the Discord, in my Discord, and um, I think this card is extremely powerful. The reason is, um, and this guy is kind of stating that up here. Um, whenever a unison has a marker removed, stating by this ruling here, you guys can go look it up. I'm pretty sure this is the exact ruling. Um, the power increases and skills given to that card are reverted back. Now, I'm the one thing I'm not sure is if it's the skills granted by the card itself or skills granted by the effects of other cards. So, for instance, Fajita Unison or Gotenks Unison. Uh, these are two unisons that are used as game enders. Uh, Vegeta obviously being yellow, Gotenks actually being black. Both of them have a mind stability where they gain power and they gain a, uh, a keyword. So, um, Fujita gains dual attack and double strike, while Gotenks gains dual attack, and then the leader, Vagex, gives him double strike. So he becomes a 25k dual attack double strike. Vegeta is a 20k dual attack double strike. Whenever you, whenever they swing, and uh, you say no negates, and they combo their whole hand, and you say activate battle, they either choose a marker to... They'd either remove a marker from the card, which in Vegeta's case, more so than Gotenks most of the time, whenever they use their minus ability, they go down the one marker. So if they remove a marker off the card, the card actually gets removed from the battle and the battle's over. Or they don't remove it and then you don't take damage from that double strike. It's very, very powerful. This is this is better than a negate in some senses. There's, a net, there's only one other card as an activate battle that works against unisons and that is uh um um something confidence um it's a blue card oh um absolute confidence it's a two drop where you can remove a marker from a card or bounce something back and draw a card but it's two energy and this is just good in any color um this is going to be a staple for side decks going into the future i think unison as we've seen the game has started to rotate more so like you need a unison on board um in most games because the unison just gives you so much value and i think it's what's what's going to end up happening with these cards is people are going to realize hey i should probably start playing uh uh more unisons and then when they do and you you know you swing it with uh with a unison you give a double strike with champa you combo you know your whole hand if someone uses this ability i believe um the the second part obviously works because it, 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 you know, if you give a unison double strike, this will make it so they either remove a marker, um, which will revert their damage and their power boost back to whatever it was before. So go tanks, go tanks will go from um, 25k base to a 5k base, and then you add on whatever combo power he had on top of that. Um, but he also loses his his dual attack and he loses his double strike. Uh, I, I think he would, no, he would lose his, he would lose the, um, well, I mean, technically he would lose his dual attack. The double strike would still count, but if he doesn't remove a marker from it, then you don't take the damage from, from it anyways. So, it's really good. And this card's gonna be really awesome looking in a full art. Um, I think this will surprisingly be, after, um, after all these cards are announced, uh, I'm gonna make a video going over what I think the most expensive cards in this set are going to be, um, like the must buys from the set, and this is gonna be one of those cards. Uh, full art versions of Clash of the Masked Warriors. I think it's gonna be. I think this card's gonna be very expensive. Maybe, and it may not be super expensive off the bat. This may be like a two or three dollar foil, but um, I think over time, I think this card will end up getting more value, as we've seen with cards like Majin Buu, um, Wickedness Incarnate. Uh, it's a black card from set ten. It's like ten dollars now for uh a uh non-foil so yeah very very good card very very good card um i'm mean, interested to see what what uh what what gets conjured up here with 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 the black cards um so far every color has hit in some aspect i think the worst color to me is probably blue again 
Um, blue just doesn't have a lot of... Blue just... It's just lackluster. Um, like, the cards are cool. Cool looking, but they're just not... They're just not hitting. Yeah, I think... Uh, I think yellow and red has the best cards in this set. So far. I think yellow is probably the best color in the set, honestly. But that just... I'm, my, my opinion may be swayed. So... But yeah, that's what I got for you guys today. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think of these cards again down below. Um, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.